Welcome back. In this video, we are on Chapter 3b, Early Numeration Systems Place Value. We'll look at what expanded form means, and we'll look at two ancient numeration systems, the Babylonian numeration system and the Mayan numeration system. Both of these systems use place value. Let's talk about expanded form. So when you see the number 84,729, you don't think of it as just a collection of 8, 4, 7, 2, 9. Each of those digits has a different value. So the 8 really represents 80,000, and the 4 really represents 4,000. Its place in the number tells us how much it's worth. Now, where do we get those numbers from? Those are just powers of 10. So this is 8 times 10,000, 4 times 1,000, 7 times 100, and so on. And then, I guess, 1 is a power of 10. That's 10 raised to the 0 power. So in fact, let's express these as powers of 10. And this is what it looks like. Now remember, if there are uh, 4 zeros, then that's 10 to the 4. 3 zeros, that's 10 to the 3. So when I finally write my number in this form, we really see it in expanded form. 8 times 10 to the 4 plus 4 times 10 cubed plus 7 times 10 squared plus 2 times 10 to the 1st plus 9 times 10 to the 0, which is just 10 to the 0 is just 1. But we see that the different places in the number have different values. The position of a digit in a numeral determines its value. If the 2 is the fourth one from the right, it's worth 2,000. But if 2 is third from the right, it's only worth 200. Now, how does this differ from the Roman numeration system, for example? Someone might think that Roman numeration is place value because, after all, if I write IV like this, it means 4, but if I write VI, it means 6. So doesn't position matter in the Roman numeration system? And kind of, but here's the big difference, is that in Roman numeration, this I always means 1, no matter where it's placed. We're either adding to 5 or subtracting from 5, but the i always means 1, and the, the v always means 5, no matter where it is. And that's different from our system and other place value systems, where the position of a numeral determines its value. Hindu Arabic is a base 10 numeration system because the different place values are powers of 10. The Babylonian numeration system is base 60. That's kind of weird, right? Uh, so on the rightmost place, it, the value is 1, but then instead of going to 10, it's 60. And instead of 10 squared, it's 60 squared, 3,600. And then to the left of that, instead of 10 cubed, 60 cubed. So like, for us, in our system, our rightmost place, we can write up to 9. And then if I want to write a number bigger than 9, I need to spill over into two places. The Babylonians they could write all the way up to 59 in this one place. And then if they wanted to write 60, then they had to start spilling over into two different places. Okay, so how did they write 1 through 59? And here we go. <laughs> so actually, 1 through 59 for them is an additive system. They use an additive system for 1 through 59. Uh, they use a sort of vertical stroke to represent a 1 and this sort of side angle to represent 10. And they combine those together to get the numbers 1 through 59. You can see here, starting with 1 and then 2, it's just a collection of these uh, vertical symbols. And then they get all up through 9, where they put kind of a 3x3 three three grid of these vertical symbols. And then once they get to 10, they uh, use an angle symbol. And then we start over with 11. Angle plus a vertical symbol. Angle plus two vertical symbols. Angle plus three of them. And so on. It's additive. We get 10 all the way up to 10 plus 9, which is 19. And then we get to 20, which is the two angles. And this continues throughout the process until eventually we get uh, five of those angles together. 5 plus 1, 5 plus 2, 5 plus 3, and so on. All the way down until I get five angles, which is 50 and then nine ones, so I get to 59, and that's as much as they would put in one position. And then they might start repeating this idea for various other positions in their number. I'll give you an example. This is a Babylonian number. Now, there's that symbol that represents three. Here's a symbol that represents 32. And this is a symbol that represents 19, but we're putting them all together. It's like three different digits of our in our number system. So 3, 32, and 19. But now, what are they multiplied by? 
the 19 is multiplied by 1, the 32 is multiplied by 60, and the 3 is multiplied by 60 squared. And when I compute those numbers and add them together, we get 12,739. So this is how the Babylonians would represent the number 12,739. In some ways, the Babylonian system is more concise than ours because, after all, they used only three places to represent their number, whereas we need five places to do that. All right, you try. See if you can do this. Uh, here are two examples. Uh, pause the video, work out what these numbers equal, and then start the video again when you are ready to check your work. Okay, give it a try. We are back. Let's see how you did. So in this first case, it's 12 and 47. So the 12 gets multiplied by 60. The 47 gets multiplied by 1. It just remains 47. And together, we get 767. In the second case, 5, 20, and 36. So multiply by the appropriate place value, uh, 60 squared, 60, and 1. Add them up, and there we go, 19,236. So that's the Babylonian numeration system. Here's a neat photo I found of someone holding a tablet that actually contains uh, Babylonian uh, numerals on it. And this is 3,700 years old. This is a famous tablet called Plimpton 322. And this uh, particular image is from the article, This Ancient Babylonian Tablet May Contain the First Evidence of Trigonometry. Here's a closer picture of the tablet. And you can see, actually, some of those symbols look like what we were just talking about. There are the angles that represent 10, and then there are some of the vertical lines, or the, the vertical stamps, that represent 1, the 1s. Sometimes the vertical stamps are a little bit hard to distinguish, I think, because they group them together so much. Let's talk about the Mayan numeration system. The Mayan numeration system is actually base 20. So their place values, again on the right, start with 1, and then go up to 20, and then 20 squared, which is 400, 20 cubed, 8,000, 20 to the fourth, 160,000, and they could continue on after that. So in their lowest place value, they need to write the numbers 1 through 19. How do they write the numbers 1 through 19? Here we go. In fact, the Mayans also had a numeral for zero, which is kind of funny. Evidently, it is a, a turtle shell. So uh, the, the shell for zero, and then dots for one through four. So again, it's kind of additive, right? It's just you know, we're throwing more symbols to represent one through four. Five is a horizontal bar, and then we combine the bar and the dots to get five through nine. So a bar with one dot, a bar with two dots, bar with three dots, bar with four dots. Now for 10, I have two uh, bars. And then 11, 12, 13, 14, I just add more dots. 15 gets the three bars, 16, 17, 18, 19. And that's where they would stop. That's the most that they had, three bars and four dots. So they would use these uh, 20 different symbols in the various places of their number. Now here's an interesting twist. The Mayans actually wrote their numbers vertically from top to bottom. So like we would write our numbers from left to right, the biggest place values on the left, they write their numbers from top to bottom with the biggest place value on top. Let's take a look at this number here. From top to bottom, it's a four, a 12, and a three. What are the place values that I'll multiply by? Well, on the bottom, that three will just get multiplied by one. Moving up, the 12 gets multiplied by 20. Moving up, the 4 gets multiplied by 20 squared, or 400. Do that calculation, add those results, and 1,843. So this is how the Mayans would write 1,843. You give it a try. Take a minute, try this thing out, see if you can figure out what the answer is, and then when you are ready to check your work, start it up again. All right, give it a try. Here's the answer. So from top to bottom, 15, 2, 0, 6. Multiply times the appropriate place value. Add them all together. 120,806. There we go. That's how the Mayans wrote that number. Here's a photo of a page from an ancient Mayan document. Uh, this, is called, this is called the Dresden Codex. It's, it's in fact 78 pages long, and it comes from the 11th century. But here's one page of it, and you can see definitely uh, some interesting Mayan numerals, along with some other uh, interesting Mayan writing. 
Now, so far we've converted numbers from the ancient systems into our system, but what if we want to go the other way around? What if I want to convert Hindu Arabic numerals into Babylonian and Mayan? Let's go the other direction. We'll start easy. Let's convert 127 into Babylonian and Mayan. We'll start with Babylonian. So recall the Babylonian place values. Um, starting from the right, I guess you could say 1, then 60, 3,600, 216,000, moving from right to left. What I do is, I'm looking at my number 127, and I think, how many places will I really need? I'll probably need to represent some 1s, and maybe some 60s, but what about 3,600s? Are there any 3,600s in, in the number 127? No, the 100, 127 is smaller than 3,600, so I don't need that at all. I only need two place values to be able to write the number 127. So that's the first thing that we do. We determine how many places will I need. So let's, we'll make some blanks there, 60s and 1s. Um, and then I start thinking, okay, 60s. How many 60s are in 127? And you might think about this. 60 times 1 is 60. 60 times 2 is 120. Oh, that's pretty close. 60 times 3 is 180, and that's too big. So I really want two of those. I want two 60s. And then if I take two 60s, then I've accounted for the number uh, 120. Two 60s is 120. So what's left over? Well, 127 minus 120. There's seven left over, and that's what goes into the ones spot. So <laughs> the Babylonians wouldn't really write two seven like that, of course. They would write their two with the two vertical lines, and then seven with seven vertical lines. I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like that. What if we convert 127 into Mayan? Again, let's look at the Mayan place values, recall what those are, and how many place values will I need? Well, I don't need 400 at all, because 127 is less than 400, so once again, it's two places. We'll need two places to represent this number in Mayan. We make some places vertically, and the top position represents the number of 20s that I have. How many 20s are there in 127? You could take 127 and divide by 20, and you see the answer is 6 point something. 20 goes into 127 six times with a little bit left over. So maybe I'll put a, a 6 there, six times. But now, how much is left over? So 6 20s is 120. So 127 minus 120. Oh, you know, once again, I'm left with uh, 7 left over. 7 left over there. Of course, we wouldn't really write uh, 6 and 7 this way. How would we write our Mayan numeral? Uh, 6 and 7. Yeah, there we go. Something like that. So there's the uh, Mayan number for 127. Now let's uh, be a little more ambitious. How about 85,323? Let's talk about this one. Convert it into Babylonian. Once again, first step, let's figure out how many places I need. I start looking at my place values, and I stop when I get to a number that's too big. I'm not going to need 216,000, so I'll use these smaller numbers. I'll need three place values, so I make spaces for those three uh, digits. So if the first question is, how many... 3600s go into 85,323. So this is the calculation we do. 85,323 divided by 3600. And what's important is that whatever comes before the decimal point. So this tells me that 3600 goes into that number 23 times with a little bit left over, but what's important is the 23. And that is what's going to be in my first position, 23. But of course, the Babylonians would write it like that. Now, let's move on. I've accounted for 23 times 3,600 into my number. So how much remains? I take my original number, 85,323, minus the 23 times 3,600, and we find that 2523 remains. So let's repeat the process on 2523, and we'll, we'll be making the number 2523 within the next two spots, the next two places. So how many 60s are there? 
I take 25, 23 divided by 60, and it's 42 plus a little bit extra, but what's important is the 42. So 42 will go there. Now, how much is left over? So I take my 42 times 60, and when I subtract that from 25, 23, I find that there are three left over. And so that's what must go into the ones spot, is the three. There we go. And so there is our Babylonian numeral for 85,323. Let's play the same game with the Mayan numerals. I look at the place values, and it looks like in this case I will need four place values. I'll make some spots where my numbers will go. Arrange four areas. And in the upper one, it's really telling me how many 8,000s are in this number. So I want 8,000 into 85,323. How many times does that go in there? Or so on my calculator, I'll do the division, and I find 10 point something. So the first answer is 10. So I get 10 8,000s. And if I subtract the 10 8,000s from my number, I get 85,323 minus those 10 8,000s. There's 5,323 left over. Again, that 5,323 represents what will go into the next three spots. So let's continue the process, but now with the 400 place value. How many 400s are there? So I take 5323 divided by 400, and I get 13 point something. Of course, what's important is that 13. So let's put 13 in my next place. Okay, how much is left over? We'll take the number I was after, 5323. I'll subtract off the 13 400s I just discovered, and there's 123 left over. So somehow 123 will be represented in these bottom two spots. How many 20s are there in 123? We do the division. We find out that there are six 20s in there. So six goes into this next spot down. How much is left over now? 123 minus the six times 20. There's three left over. I'm at the very end. So that's my answer for the ones spot. And there we have it. Finally, here is our Babylonian number for uh, 85,323. And that is a good place to stop for this chapter.